Hi, my name is Albert Dunford and in this tutorial video we are going to go over how to troubleshoot your AC sweep in TSIM. So I'm uh, making this video because users sometimes ask me how I managed to get such a nice looking AC sweep result and so I'm going to endeavor to work you through what I do when I try and make uh, get a frequency response to behave and how I can recognize from uh, the uh, frequency plot if it's not quite right or uh, how to improve upon it. So what we've got here is a nice looking frequency response. Uh, we've swept from, if we look at the parameters here, we've swept, swept from 100 hertz to 20k um, and we've got uh, the source peak amplitude of uh, 0.04 here which is about 10% of our reference and our steady state time is 10 milliseconds. So uh, let's start with the start and end frequency. Why did I choose 100 hertz and why did I choose 20K? So we can see from the plot that uh, 100 hertz, there's not really all that much happening before 100 hertz. All the action in this converter is, is uh, the, the phase transition is happening here at, at about a 1K. And then up here at 20K, there's not really, we've, the phase is stabilized and we're just in constant decay attenuation here of the amplitude. So um, why lower? Well, going lower isn't really gonna give us any new information. And why go higher? Well, going higher isn't really gonna give us any new information. And actually going higher is just gonna cause problems. What we need to remember here is that PSIM is introducing a frequency at each one of these frequencies that we've identified. So between 100 and 200, at each one of these points here, we've injected a frequency uh, at this point here. And then on the output voltage here, what we're doing is actually measuring that uh, response. So we're, we're seeing a gain and phase change versus the frequency wherever we inject. Uh, and so this is a time domain simulation that we're doing. So we're not devolving this into the frequency domain. When we're running the simulation, the switch, switching characteristics of these devices is still preserved. So we have to respect that this switching source here, so the carrier waveform, is in fact sampling our reference. So if we try and get close to uh, Nyquist over two, uh, um, by switching over two, we start running into Nyquist problems. So going, starting to get close to 50 kHz is, is your absolute maximum limit. And then even then at 50K, you're not really getting that many points per cycle. And then if you go higher than 50K, you're starting to get frequency fold back. So we always need to be cognizant of, okay, what's my switching speed? And how is that actually going to happen in the real system? Because this is not an average model. We don't have the ability to, to push this out to 10 megahertz to see what happens. Because that's actually not what's going to really happen when you have a switching uh, circuit in the way. <clears throat> okay. Let's change this around and, and look to see what happens here. So let's actually push this out to like 80 kilohertz and we can see what happens when we start having frequencies that are a little bit on the, on the too high side. So I'll run this with uh, 80K now instead of 20K and we'll just, uh, we should see the results pop up here in a few seconds. And we can see <clears throat> that everything starts to fall apart right around 50 kilohertz, which is you know, switching over two. So that's the first lesson here, is don't, don't go close to switching over two. Just keep it beforehand. And, um, you know, we can't sweep out to some arbitrarily high frequency. We need to respect the switching speed. So keeping that back at 20K. And we'll change this, uh, sweep it again to get our, our, our response back. The next thing we need to be worried about is... Um, the, the, the switching uh, time step. So <clears throat> right now I'm running with 50 nanoseconds, which is a fairly small time step. And the reason for that is I've got a lot of data points up here. So again, PSIM is sampling the signal and extracting the frequency response. So we need enough data points at these higher frequencies in order to extract a good signal. So if, we, if our time step is too big, so if we pull up the calculator here, and so we're switching at 100K, so 1 over 100K is a period of 10 microseconds. And if we divide by 0.5 micro, 
that's 20 points per cycle at 100k. So, you know, that's that's a decent amount of switching points if we were just looking at the at the open loop response and time domain simulations. But when we need to start being able to resolve the differences in frequencies up here, uh, this actually starts driving the time step requirement that we need. And the PSIM has no way of, of really enforcing this up here because all PSIM is doing is looking at the known frequencies in the system. So uh, what, we should, what, what will happen if we have too big a time step if we run this simulation now is we're going to get a fast simulation. We can start to see that there's some high frequency noise up here. And that's because we don't have enough time points at these higher frequencies to resolve them nicely. So we can rectify this by either increasing the time step here, or we can go in here and drop the number of points we need. So if we go to 30, we might get a better, um, a better response here. And not really, you know, so definitely time step is a more important factor here. So if we go back and, and go back to say even uh, 100 nanoseconds and rerun, we should start to see um, this to smooth out a little bit here, and it does. So time step is something to always to consider, especially at high frequencies. So if you're starting to see noise at high frequencies, think about your time step. And the other thing to think about is amplitude here. So if we have a really small amplitude um, of perturbation, we need to always consider the frequency that uh, that we're actually injecting a frequency. I'll, I'll keep on hammering this point home is that we're injecting real frequencies and we need to extract that data. We have 40 dB of, of attenuation up here. We need to make sure that there's signal there left for us to measure. So for a really small amplitude of perturbation, we can see again, I changed at that time to 0 0.01, so less than 5%, um, you know, getting close, you know, quite a small number compared to the reference. We're starting to see this, this noise appearing back over here again. So this is a result of not enough signal. We've got attenuation here. We need signal to noise. So that's why I had it up here at about 10% to start with. Okay, so uh, that's um, something to consider uh, always is what is my time step? Do I have enough signal at high frequencies or signal strength? And do I ac accurately capture the transition zone? Uh, so <clears throat> adding in a lower frequency point over here really isn't going to give us that much extra information if we're looking to design a controller. Um, and we'll just cause the simulation to run a lot fast, a lot slower, because then we need to run at least one cycle of the lowest frequency in here. So if we want to run one hertz, that's going to be uh, one second which at 100 nanoseconds per time step is going to be a lot, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's going to be 10 million data points that we need to compute, just so we can get that uh, low frequency data point, which is going to have a gain of 20 dB and a phase of zero. So we know that already just by looking at this. So if you really want that low frequency data point, we can just edit the data itself to add that in. You know, that's not really going to be very useful for us. Um, other things we need to be careful of is the frequency plot changes, obviously, with uh, changing the um, RLC uh, factor here. So if we increase or, or, sorry, decrease the resistance here, we're going to actually change the situation. We're going to add in some more resonance to the circuit, and we need to, we start to see some issues again. So now we're seeing issues at DC with the low, with the, lower impedance here. So let's actually go back and look at, at, at the running of this in, um, at, in the time domain. So uh, just running a time domain simulation, we can see that there's a lot of oscillation at the beginning and then it's not settling out really uh, for quite a while. So let's just run this out to maybe 50 milliseconds and see when it does actually finally settle down. And definitely we're, you know, even up towards 50 milliseconds, it's starting to you know, there's still some oscillation here around 30 milliseconds, but definitely 50 milliseconds were okay. And if we look at my original settings, uh, it, I think it was 10 ohms we were running with before. If we run it with 10 ohms, there's much less drama at the very beginning and it settles out a lot quicker. So uh, part of how this AC sweep works is it waits for steady state before it starts injecting those frequencies. So if we're, if, 
it was going to settle out at 50 milliseconds, we need to put steady state time at 50 milliseconds in. So let's run this now with the 50 milliseconds in, and we should, so we should be uh, looking pretty now. So I changed the steady state time to 50 milliseconds, and that's going to, we're starting to look a little bit better. <clears throat> we may want to even uh, increase this even further. So why don't we try 100 milliseconds to see what happens. <clears throat> In the end, tuning uh, the, the, the frequency sweep is more an, uh, a method of you know, playing with things and seeing what happens, um, and getting a better feel for the numbers. And maybe we should drop the perturbation amplitude down. Maybe that will help the low frequency. There we go. <clears throat> so dropping the perturbation amplitude down helped as well because um, it helps with the, with the damping that we're not putting in so much signal um, and we're still capturing the transition. So we can still use this to design a controller as well. Um, what else can I comment on here? So that's uh, some of the things I look at. So definitely keep in mind our, 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 our amplitude here. Uh, we always need to, to, to recognize that we're actually injecting a frequency in the time domain. So if we're looking at 200 hertz, uh, with a signal of 0.02, if we run this, we need to. We can see that that there's enough signal there for us to pick out. If we're looking at, you know, um, 15k as the perturbation, you know, if we remember from the boat plot, that's actually got a decent amount of attenuation, so we may not see that much ripple there. So if we zoom in over here. So there's a little bit. Of, so we've got switching noise here at 100 kilohertz combined with the, with the with the 15k. If we run the FFT on this, we might see the, uh, we might see the 15k hertz. Uh, so uh, that's 100k, and here's the 15k. So <clears throat> that's the kind of thing uh, you always need to kind of keep in mind when you're running a, a frequency sweep in PSIM is. Again, to hammer again, we're actually injecting time domain signals, not doing a frequency domain uh, translation of your circuit. So we always need to make sure we have enough signal to measure and that the, the signal uh, bandwidth makes sense relative to uh, the transition point of our converter and with regards to the switching speed of our converter. Um, and finally, let's put a real, really low resistance here, so really have a lot of damping, and we should see this really just tail off completely. And we can probably run this for a lot shorter period of time. And here we can see with the really, um, really high, um, really low impedance here, so lots of damping, what that looks like. And then we may need to go in, so there's not much point maybe running to these higher frequencies now, we may need to add in those lower points in order to be able to set up the control properly. So that's it for this tutorial video. Um, I'll do another video where I'll also do some sweeps of um, uh, less, um, less likely topologies uh, soon. So doing things like uh, frequency sweeps of a full bridge converter with phase shift, uh, doing a frequency a sweep of a LLC or like a three phase inverter with DQ control, things like that. Have a look out for that video. So. I hope this helps you tune your frequency sweeps a little bit better. Um, so yeah, always keep in mind you know, time step, um, switching speed, and uh, source amplitudes here. Okay, that's it for this video. Check back again for more videos soon. Thank you so much.